great. Um, uh, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to start with this, but I think I will. Uh, I'm going to start with a really quick safety moment, since obviously that's really important to us in the oil and gas industry. Um, it was mentioned how I had a conflict come up from the uh, the drill bits forum where I, I couldn't present there. Uh, and the reason for that, was we had a bit of an HSE incident at home that day. Uh, and so actually what happened was uh, my wife was doing some uh, chores around the house and she caught her wedding ring on a, on a ledge and really injured her finger. And um, it, would ha it happened because uh, she was, uh, you know, self-admittedly said she was taking a bit of a shortcut. And so, uh, you know, she ended up being okay and, you know, uh, just has a little bit of swelling still. Uh, but, every, you know, no permanent damage, really. Uh, but I guess the lesson is that uh, 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 things can happen at, at any point. We need to be careful of our safety, not just in the workplace, but also at home. Uh, and um, and they can kind of come up in the most unexpected uh, situations. So we kind of always need to be on our guard and, and you know, maybe not taking shortcuts when um, uh, when when you when you think you can. Um, you know, for us, it resulted in a, a trip to urgent care that, uh, you know, it, it all worked out just fine in the end. But uh, I just figured I'd do that kind of a quick, quick safety moment for, uh, for the day. So, uh, but to kind of get right into the end of the presentation. So I, I'm going to be presenting today on uh, improving uh, curve performance with hybrid drill bits and, and high speed motors. Uh, so what I'm what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing a case study about increasing the power input to uh, to drilling curve sections with bent motor BHAs. And, you know, as we all know, in a curve section, the tool face control is really really important so that you can achieve your directional objectives. Uh, but that's often a limiter to the amount of weight that you can apply to the drill bit, to the aggressiveness of the of the bit that you can deploy. Uh, and really to the total power that you can put into your drilling system uh, that enables you to improve the penetration rates. So I'm going to go over a case study about uh, how we deployed and uh, different drill bit technologies to uh, enable greater power input to, uh, to drill curve sections at, at faster ROP. So the case I'm going to go over is from Western Oklahoma. Uh, where we're drilling uh, Cleveland sand uh, horizontals. Um, there, the curve section is drilled with a six and an eighth inch drill bit on a bent motor BHA. And what makes this section challenging is that uh, we're dealing with really high buildup rates, you know, kind of 10 to 12 degree per hundred um, uh, rates that we're targeting. Uh, but there's also quite interrelated for formations that are affecting our tool face control and our ability to stay on the well plan. So you can see on the right side of the screen, there is a, a, a graph of the gamma ray from this section with the list of the different formation tops that we drill through. So you can see there's some sections that are, that are fairly uh, ratty. So as we drill through those uh, harder and softer layers, uh, that affects the torque in our drill bit and therefore the torque in the drill string and, and affects the, uh, the tool face control uh, that the directional driller has. And so we're doing all of this while trying to um, reduce the time in the curve section and, uh, and improving, uh, improving the ROP that, uh, that we can achieve. And so, you know, a common approach, approach for uh, curve sections is to use a, a hybrid style of drill bit composed of PDC blades and tungsten carbide uh, roller cones. You know, and this has worked well in a number of applications around, uh, around the world for, you know, improving the torsional stability and tool face control uh, of the drill bit. And, and I'm gonna go through uh, this case study on how we deployed this and optimized it to, uh, to improve penetration rates. So uh, the case, act, case study starts with our first trial of a hybrid uh, drill bit in this section. Um, uh, we deployed a, a, a hybrid drill bit uh, for a run where we ran it on a conventional motor. So it's a four and three quarter inch, uh, seven, eight, 3.8 stage motor that put out 0 0.52 uh, revs per gallon. And so with the flow rates uh, that the operator was, was running here, we were kind of around 150 total bit RPM. 
And uh, the first trial of, of this bit style was, was quite successful. Uh, we had a low number of drilling hours for the curve. Uh, the bit came out in really, really good condition. Reports from the directional drillers were of, of great tool face control. Uh, and you know the chart in the bottom left shows uh, the number of drilling hours uh, for a, a variety of wells that drilled one run curve sections over the previous two years for this operator. So um, it, it was a really good run right uh, right out of the gate. Um, and, you know, but it wasn't letting the world on fire. You know, it, it was very good, but we knew um, there was some extra steps that uh, could be taken to uh, to really reduce the time in this section and make that step change in performance over the interval that, that we were looking for. So uh, because of the, the dull condition of the drill bit, we felt that a, a, a reasonable next step to take was to increase the power input uh, by using a high-speed motor to, to improve the penetration rate. Uh, so uh, when we deployed on the next well, we, we now ran it the bit on a uh, high-speed motor with 0.86 revs per gallon uh, speed. So this was a five inch, seven eight, uh, 10.6 stage motor um, with a 2.25 degree uh, bend setting. Uh, what, what was really important uh, about this first trial on the high-speed motor was that we didn't want to really just plug and play with, with just changing out the motor and, and, and hoping for the best. Um, we wanted to make sure we provided a parameter roadmap uh, to the drillers on the rig so that we could have the best chance of success right out of the gate. Uh, so we had our, our parameters from our first trial on the conventional speed motor uh, that we could, we could kind of use to help us plan that out. So what we did is we were looking for a similar weight on bit range. And so that was the 30 to 35 kilopound uh, weight range that we, that we put here. Uh, and, you know, we were moving, changing our parameters from, like I said, about 150 on the, the previous trials to, you know, around 250, 260 RPM when we were sliding and then up to 300 RPM in, in any rotating sections in that curve. Um, but more importantly, we wanted to provide the driller with a differential pressure uh, range that they could target. So uh, anytime you change your drilling motor, you know, the, the, the differential pressure that you would achieve for a particular uh, bit torque or depth of cut is, is going to change. And so uh, since a high-speed motor uh, has a has a lower torque slope rating than uh, than a lower speed motor. Uh, what we were able to do is uh, is uh, calculate our, or estimate our our motor torque from our conventional bit runs, and then uh, and then plan that out. Use that equivalent torque uh, to estimate our differential pressure range that we would get. Uh, on the uh, with our with our new our new motor with the high speed motor. So um, this was a this proved really helpful for us to um, make sure we got the same depth of cut on the on the drill bit, uh, and, and make sure we were really improving our our penetration rates. Uh, sorry, I see a comment here is is if potentially I'm cutting off on my end. Uh, I apologize if my connection isn't. Isn't really good. Maybe if you guys can put in the chat uh, if there continue to be challenges with my connection or if uh, or if it's getting better, please. So um, we we trialed the the high speed motor on on three wells to to begin with. Um, the first thing is that the the ROP response was was great. Uh, you know, on our when we ran on the conventional speed motor, we were kind of around 45 foot an hour, and in this case, we were you know uh, mid to high 50 to low 60 foot an hour uh, range. So 
you know, we really got about a 50% boost in penetration rate uh, kind of right off the bat. So that was really promising to start. Uh, but the challenge was uh, two out of the three runs were pulled, pulled for buildup rates due to tool face control, which, you know, you think with a hybrid style drill bit like, oh, hey, that doesn't that doesn't happen. That's, uh, you know, that's a pretty unusual, um, uh, you know, feedback to get from the directional driller that, that the tool face control really, really wasn't great with with this style of bit. So um, we knew we had to go back and, and do some changes to the drill bit design to try and improve that for the directional drillers. Uh, I, I see some comments that I think you guys can hear me loud and clear. So great, I hope that, I hope that continues. So um, we went back and looked at the drill bit design and uh, what we did is we were, we adjusted the amount that the roller cone cutting structure on the bit uh, engaged with the rock and, and how much it drilled the rock. So, uh, you know, as you might anticipate, the, the more roller cone engagement that we can get with the formation, then, you know, the more the bit starts to behave like a roller cone and the, the better tool face control that, that we can get. And, and what's important about this is uh, we have a, analytical tool that allows us to evaluate this uh, amount of uh, TCI engagement uh, based on the design that we're deploying and the depth of cut that the bit is drilling at. And so if you look at the images on the right, uh, get the laser pointer here. If you look at the these little red circles that, sorry, let me explain this, this better. This is a, um, you take your, your drill bit and you uh, rotate it through a, a bit rock interaction model. And this gray surface area up here represents the bottom hole pattern that the drill bit creates. Uh, you know, you can see these little blue sections are the PDC cutters that, uh, that are creating the, uh, you know, those tubes, that tube curving shape in, in the pattern. Uh, but most importantly here is these little red dots that you see are where the inserts to the roller cones are, are drilling the rock. And so we can measure uh, that amount to get an assessment to how engaged the, uh, the TCI portion uh, is, is drilling the rock. If you look at the image on the right, this is now uh, where you've changed the TCI engagement to, to get a greater amount of the rock drilled from the roller cone portion. So you can see the uh, the dots are larger, they extend further into the center of the bit. Um, th we're getting a higher TCI engagement uh, with, uh, with this change in drill bit design. And so we can do that analytically over a range of depths of cut, and we can come up with a chart like you see on the left, uh, which allows us to assess uh, different bit designs or, or ways of changing the roller cone cutting structure to, to get more or less TCI engagement. Uh, so in this case, we went from the design from a design with low TCI engagement to to one with higher engagement to make sure we got that improved. Um, uh, we would we would reduce the bit aggressiveness slightly and and enable better tool face control uh, to to the directional drillers and make uh, make finishing the curves in one section more consistent. So uh, this slide shows the results that we had of, uh, of that combination of the, the hybrid drill bit with greater TCI engagement and also with the high-speed motor. Uh, we really had some fantastic results. Uh, the change was really, really successful. Uh, we had 100% of our curves completed in one run. Uh, after this, uh, we had a total of uh, nine uh, curves that we drilled. It result in the lowest number of average drilling hours out of any of the different bit and motor combinations uh, that, that we had. Uh, one thing that was also really important is that we had uh, no change in the dull condition to the drill bit. You know, one of the risks that, uh, that we discussed in advance of deploying this was that you start to put greater RPM into your bit and, and you potentially wear out your cutting structure faster uh, but, you know, PDC cutter technology these days is 
you know, such that we were able to, you know, basically not change uh, the uh, the dull condition of the drill bit when uh, when it came out of the hole. And and the pictures uh, on the bottom left there uh, kind of give an indication um, of what we tended to see uh, uh, on the dull bits. So uh, the the chart on the right shows the the average drilling hours for one run curves uh, with the different configurations. So if we go back and compare to the uh, five blade PDC and and 0 0.52 rev per gallon motor, you know which was the incumbent configuration uh, before we started the uh, the hybrid drill bit trials, uh, we reduced the time in the curve by 14 hours. Uh, so it was about 30 hours on average with the, the PC uh, and standard motor and about 16 hours on average uh, with, the, uh, with the hybrid bit and the high speed motor. Uh, and we, we did that in conjunction with the 100% uh, curve completion rate. So uh, everybody was really happy um, with, with how, these, how these results uh, were, what we accomplished out of here. Um, you know, saving saving the operator quite a lot of time uh, over this particular interval. Uh, so, just kind of in conclusion, uh, to wrap everything up. So, uh, we were able to improve the performance of the check section by um, by increasing the power input while maintaining uh, tool face control. Uh, it did have a really, really big impact on on the performance to, to this particular section, uh, and we did it not with just you know uh, like a plug and play type um, approach to it, right? We really wanted to make sure we took a, a systems approach in engineering this section uh, by considering the drill bit technology, uh, the the motor technology, uh, as as well as the operations guide uh, with the drilling parameters. Uh, that we we used in this section, uh, and so you know it did necessitate that we made a, a change to the drill bit design to increase the TCI engagement to, to maintain tool face control. Uh, but once we did that, then uh, we were able to improve the average performance in the curve uh, because it allowed uh, higher weight on bit and higher differential pressure to be more consistently applied throughout the section. And so we we increased the power input through through not just the RPM but but also through the weight and torque that was was being applied to to the drill bit as well. So uh, it was quite significant um, time savings to the operator 14 hours uh, per curve section uh, like we just discussed on on the previous slide. Uh, and 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 it may be last but not least the the maybe the take home message here is is a discussion about what types of applications this strategy would be suitable for. And, and I've got some bullet points here that, that I think are our starting point for that, which is we want to look for uh, applications where bit, bit durability is not a concern. You know, that's, that's what we had in this application where, uh, you know, both PDC bits and hybrid bits were coming out in really good condition. Uh, so we weren't concerned about increasing the power input and, and actually having uh, extra trips for you know penetration rate because our bits were becoming damaged. Yeah. But we do want to look at applications where the power input is limited by the ability to maintain tool face control. And, and I think this can come with a wide variety of different curve sections. You know, everything from a you know more severe tool face control issue section where maybe you have extra trips that are um, the, for buildup rates because you, you're not able to stay on, on your directional plan, or even more mild or moderate um, situations where you are backing off your weight on bit in order to maintain tool face control and, and, uh, and stay on plan, right? That's resulting in some invisible lost time where you're just not uh, optimizing your penetration rate throughout, throughout the section. So uh, these are the strategies uh, outlined here enable you to more consistently um, stay on that high amount of differential pressure, high amount of weight on bit throughout the section uh, while uh, maintaining your tool face control at the same time. So 
Uh, and lastly, you know, well plans that require high buildup rates or, or potentially if you want to change your well plan to increase the buildup rates, right? This is a strategy that um, allows you to maintain your tool phase control and, and reduce the risk while um, uh, certainly not compromising and, and probably even improving your penetration rate uh, that you see uh, by, by increasing the power input with a, with a higher speed motor. So, um, so uh, I just want to thank the team from Four Point Energy um, for for partnering with us on on this. Um, their uh, their drilling engineers as well as their direct, directional drilling supervisor, supervisors uh, and the, the crews of both uh, Power One and Power Seven rigs um, is a really uh, collaborative. Um, uh, environment that we had here to to solve the challenges we had had in front of us. So uh, I just want to thank these guys for uh, for the opportunity to uh, you know put this into into practice in this application. So uh, that's uh, that's what I had for um, for the presentation. Uh, would be really happy to answer any questions you guys have. I see, there's a few that are in the chat here and in the Q and A. Um, how, how do you guys usually facilitate that? Do you guys want me to pull up the Q&A on my side or? Uh, uh, yeah, you, do, you, you can do that. Just read off the questions yeah. and answer them. Okay, all right. You can, you can So uh, from Scott M. Yeah, I think I got them all up here. Um, uh, hopefully we uh, we're able to handle them all here. So uh, on, on the chat, we've got from Scott M. These are very short runs and the performance appears to improve with more TCI engagement as a conventional TCI bit with a high speed bearing package been tried. Uh, no, we did not try a conventional TCI bit. Um, my reaction to that would be, uh, you know, as much as we are increasing the TCI engagement, you know, still on the spectrum, these hybrid bits still probably behave more like a PDC than they do like a TCI. I think we would be really likely to reduce our power input if we trialed a TCI bit because it would be really hard to get the differential pressure out of the system uh, with the weight on bit limits that you would have between, uh, you know, the bearing package and the motor, or you know, bearing typical bearing and seal uh, reliability ranges on the uh, on the bit technology. Uh, from uh, Adam Bohannon, uh, how many bits used per run, and how many repairs per bit? Um, uh, do you mean how many bits per section? Is uh, is that? What, I'm presuming that's what you mean. Uh, it, these are one run curves. Um, yeah, I was just curious about that because you had uh, nine of nine, and I wasn't sure if that was just one bit per curve or or what. So. Oh yeah. So yeah, when I have these numbers down here, yeah, that is um, the number of uh, that's a total number of wells. That we, so we had trialed it on nine wells, and out of those nine wells, we, we completed it in one, one run nine times. Uh, for example, if you go back to the five blade PDC and 0 0.52 rev per gallon configuration, that was done on seven wells, and that was completed in one run on six of those seven wells. All right. uh, how many repairs per bit? So, uh, I mean, we, we have a range. So did that? Did that answer your question, Adam? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm just looking at your pictures right here, and I can definitely see some cutter damage. So I wasn't sure if this was, um, if it drilled further after you did the curve and the damage was from the total run, or if you just did the curve and then pulled the bit. Uh, just trying to gauge, you know, what, uh, how durable yes. Yes. Uh, things are, really. Right. So this, this is from just a single run. So we'll repair these, uh, repair these bits after every single run. So it's a, it's a freshly repaired bit every time we deploy. Uh, most critically, that's important for the, uh, the bearing and seal package on the roller cone portion, right? You know, you start putting revolutions on that, and 
and you'll get into you know potentially issues on bearing and seal reliability. So uh, yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a new or you know recently repaired bit for for every deployment. Uh, okay, now on the Q and A section here from Oscar. Uh, some of the challenges on hybrid Chimera bits have been the reliability of seals. What are the safeguards BHI have put in place to overcome these issues? Yeah, great question, Oscar. Uh, so uh, that was also another risk that we assessed going into this um, into this application, where yeah, we're start we're going to start uh, turning these at high RPMs and putting a lot of K revs on on a bit. So uh, there's a couple ways that we manage that. Um, uh the the best one that we really have is that in how we design the bits the we have a like a mechanical retention mechanism on the um between the uh, bearing pan of the roller cone and the pdc blade so if you were to have a bearing and seal failure of the roller cone um there's physically not enough space uh, for that uh, for the roller cone to come off of uh, of its pin and, and have components lost down hole. So uh, that's kind of like, obviously that's when you get into the catastrophic uh, type um, type issues with bearing and seals. But, you know, prior to that, we're also mitigating that with recommendations to the drillers on what signs to look for that might indicate that you have, um, you know, bearing and seal issues to begin with. Uh, and then understanding kind of the overall reliability that we have with the bearing and seals, you know, what type of parameters that we can put on it, what type of hours and KRAMs that we might expect uh, expect out of it. So uh, because these were pretty short sections, you know, we were doing them in under 20 hours uh, and, you know, the, we were anticipating the, the KRAMs to be below our, our thresholds. Uh, so we felt it was, it was a reasonable risk to take in this in this application, and uh, and yeah, we didn't have any bearing and seal issues uh, that uh, that persisted in, in in this application. So, uh, another one from Oscar. Although the Chimera design is on point to address tool phase control issues for curve applications, it becomes a challenge for lateral applications due to its passiveness. Can you show any data that compares the ROP of this bit design in the lateral versus other PDC bits? Um, in this application, uh, that was not the objective. We were drilling dedicated curves and, and not pushing them out into, um, uh, into lateral sections. Uh, yeah, in general, that, that, that does become a challenge with chimera bits in laterals because we want to typically run them with higher weight on bit. And, you know, we have weight on bit transfer issues uh, when, once you get out into lateral sections. Um, I think my my guidance on that is, uh, you know, hybrid drill bit designs are most suited in lateral applications when there's an, an, another problem that you need to solve. So whether that's steerability for staring, staying on plan or it's a durability aspect to um, uh, to make sure you increase your, uh, you know, your run length. Um, and when we get into those types of applications, uh, yes, we do have data that demonstrates uh, how we can, you know, maintain penetration rate uh, with a, a, a kind of a hybrid drill bit uh, similar to that of, of a PDC bit. So uh, an example of an application where we've done that is the Woodford laterals in, uh, in the Midcon where you often have a lot of steering challenges due to highly uh, uh, dipped and faulted formations and a lot of chert and pyrite in the, uh, in the rock that affects, affects bit durability. Okay, um, another, uh, another question here. How did you decide which TCI engagement is optimal for the application? Uh, that's another really great question here. Um, it is, it is somewhat of a judgment call. Um, we we kind of need to use our experience with the bit technology to decide how much is too much, or you know how you know what's what's the right amount. Uh, we 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 would go through some you know trial and error type um, trials in the field to do this to make sure we got it dialed in right. 
uh, in this case, uh, we, we did get it quite optimized right on our, our first iteration. Um, so the, the, the purpose of the tool really is to just give us an indication on how big of an impact that, uh, that we're making. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, we had some other data from some, like in this application, we had, um, an older generation of hybrid design that, uh, you know, I, I didn't really outline here today, which had exceptionally high TCI engagement. And so we kind of use that to assess, um, it, it kind of gave us a feel for how much was too much versus maybe what wasn't quite enough. We sort of shot for the middle, uh, if, if that makes sense. So you kind of got to put the whole uh, scenario into context with your experiences and, you know, and the challenges you have um, uh, with, the, uh, um, with, with the application. Okay, and this looks like the last question I got here. Are there any applications where hybrid bits won't work like soft shells, et cetera, where we'd say is the application envelope for the hybrid bits? Uh, that's another really good question. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really is application dependent. Uh, like you kind of men mentioned soft shells, you know, sometimes those are the most challenging applications to, um, to keep your tool face control because uh, the rock is soft and and you can have difficulty achieving buildup rates and tool face control can sometimes be a little more erratic. Uh, so we, we do have technologies that, uh, that work well in those types of applications. Um, you know, I, I really think it's a case by case basis. So if you, I think what's important about maybe my presentation is that this is just another strategy to deploy, right? So if you've got a PDC bit and you're really consistently making your, your section and your limiter to completing, to improving your penetration rate in the, in the curve is not a uh, bit power. You know, uh, may, maybe that's, that's something where you wouldn't, you wouldn't consider it. Um, you know, uh, I, I think it just really kind of depends on, on what your objectives are, you know, uh, we found, so this isn't the only application where we have deployed this strategy. Um, we've also deployed it in uh, eight and three quarter inch bit diameters through, uh, for Merrimack targets in the Midcon, as well as for uh, Springer targets uh, in, in the Midcon as well, for anyone who might be familiar with the, with the applications and geology in that basin. Um, and so, you know, we did find it across a wide variety of applications. So, um, yeah, I think it just kind of depends on the limiters in, in front of you. Um, you know, I think what's maybe what's most important is that, you know, the hybrid drill bit is it's not going to be just plug and play. Right? If you do use it, it needs to be to solve a problem and we need to change the way we drill because of it, you know, changing the way we uh, use our operating parameters. So that, that might just be the weight on bit in some cases, or you know, it might be uh, the RPM like, like I described here. Um, I, I hope that answered your question. Please follow up if, if you want some more um, uh, follow up on that. So I think that's all the questions I've got in the, uh, in the Q and A and in the chat here. Um, if there's anything else, I'd, I'd be uh, very happy to answer. Uh, was this bit used to drill out like an intermediate casing shoe or uh, was is Four Point doing anything uh, with their previous PDC? Uh, like you said, the incumbent uh, bit design to drill out intermediate casings. Uh, right now, we did drill out the intermediate casing shoe with this. Uh, typical directional plan was we had about, about 100 foot uh, vertical section to drill before we kicked off and completed the curve. Um, it, it varied a little bit based on the target they were chasing, but yeah, so we did, uh, we did drill out that intermediate casing shoe with this assembly. Do we have any other questions? All 
All right. Well, if you guys think of anything, uh, feel free to uh, shoot us an email. As Eliana indicated, we will have this stuff up on social media here shortly. So if you want to go back and review and uh, you can go take a look. So John, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, I think these are uh, very helpful. We have almost 30 people online uh, watching this. So, um, you know, let's, uh, we'll, we'll get more of these out here for you. So thanks again, everybody have a great day. Thanks, Jim. Hey, thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, John. You guys are welcome.